Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. Now I'm not going to lie, this week I had to go and search how to pronounce this type of woman's name. Now, this week we are focusing on the Syrophoenician woman. This is part one of four where we take a look at her story, her character. Though a Gentile, she addressed Jesus as Lord son of David. Her great faith resulted in her daughter's deliverance. Her sorrow, that her child was possessed by an evil spirit. Her joy, that Jesus freed her daughter from spiritual bondage. Key scriptures, Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28 and Mark 7 verses 24 to 30. Her story, her body jerked and twisted arms thrashing the air. Wide-eyed, the little girl spoke to ghosts her mother could not see, her face changing as rapidly as clouds in a sudden storm. Fear, surprise, and then a crazy kind of laughter, as though someone had stolen her soul. Dark hair stuck in gummy strands against her cheeks. Her mother wondered what had become of the sweet child who had followed her like a puppy wherever she went, how she missed those soft kisses and the button nose that had nuzzled her cheek. She had hardly slept these last few nights for fear of what her daughter might do to herself. Neither of them, she thought, could stand much more. Just that morning, she had caught wind of a Jewish healer who friends said had come to Tyre hoping for relief from the crowds that mobbed him in Galilee. It didn't matter that Jews seldom mingled with Gentiles. She would go to him, beg his help, throw a fit herself if necessary. She would do whatever it took to get him to listen. It didn't take long to find him. She approached Jesus, pleading, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But Jesus ignored the woman, making no reply. Finally, his disciples said to Jesus, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. But Jesus knew it would not be that easy to get rid of her. The only way, in fact, would be to answer her prayer. He told them, I was sent only to do I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Hearing him, the woman fell at his feet again, imploring, Lord, help me. Then Jesus turned and said, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. But the woman would not give up. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, Jesus said. So the Syrophoenician woman returned to her daughter who was delivered from the evil spirit the very same hour that Jesus had spoken. Scripture doesn't describe the little girl of this story in any detail. It says only that she was possessed by a demon. But judging from similar incidents such as that of the Gerasene demonic, whose story is told in Luke chapter 8, or the little boy in Matthew chapter 17, who kept throwing himself in the fire, the signs of demonic possession were probably both obvious and frightening. But why did Jesus seem so rude to the poor woman, ignoring her request and then referring to her and her child as dogs? His response may sound a little less harsh when you realise that the word he used for dogs was not the de derisive one Jews ordinarily reserved for Gentiles. Instead, it was a term used for little dogs kept as pets. Jesus was also making it clear that his primary mission was to the Israelites. Had Jesus performed many healings and miracles in Tyre and Sidon, he would have risked the same kind of mob scenes he had just left behind in Galilee, thus inaugurating a ministry to the Gentiles in advance of his father's timing. The woman couldn't have known the reason for his silence. However, 
and it must have tested her faith. But rather than give up or take offence, she exercised her quick wit, revealing both a deep humility and a tenacious faith. It was the combination Jesus seemed unable to resist. Fertile soil in which to grow a miracle. The Syrophoenician woman must have rejoiced that day to see the daughter she loved safe and sane, grateful for the life-giving bread that had fallen from the master's table. Thank you for listening. The Syrophoenician woman used quick wits and self-control because I have to admit if that was the kind of response that I had received from Jesus I know me and my first reactions would have been wow that's a bit rude you know and how quick are we always to react and go straight to the anger or frustration she quick wittingly was so tenacious in her faith that despite of what she felt or how she felt receiving those words from Jesus, his reaction to her, she knew that she knew that he would, he would be able to heal her daughter. And she knew that she had to, well, she was a battle, she was fighting, she was pleading for her daughter's life and it was through that tenacious faith that she had that Jesus healed her daughter he could see the strength of the faith in her she knew he knew that she truly believed that he could heal her daughter and so he did may we be encouraged by her how tenacious are we about our faith how much do we believe? May we be encouraged by this Syrophoenician woman. Do you not like how I pronounce that now? I've got used to it now. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Please join me tomorrow as we take a look at her life and times with a specific focus on demon possession. Stay, stay safe, keep praying and God bless. Two of four, where we take a look at her life and times with a specific focus on demon possession. The New Testament teems with stories of people possessed by demons. Demons are fallen angels, emissaries of Satan, sent to earth to oppress human beings and lead them astray. Under Satan's control, their only goal is to further his purposes. They have supernatural powers here on earth supernatural intelligence they know and try to hide the truth and they recognize jesus as god's son the supernatural strength a man possessed by demons could break away even when chained though supernatural in their strength demons are not more powerful than god or his son whenever demons came face to face with christ or his disciples in the new testament they trembled and did their bidding what the New Testament describes as demon-possessed people, we might today depict as having an illness of some sort, physical or mental. How much distinction can be made between the two is uncertain. After Jesus cast a demon out of one man, he was described as sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. The man's demon possession could easily have been extreme mental illness. At times, demon possession caused muteness or blindness or convulsions. We can only speculate whether today we would view these illnesses as purely physical. It is interesting to note that demons are mentioned only twice in the Old Testament, Jerusalem 32 verse 17 and Psalm 106 verse 37, yet over 70 times in the New Testament, all but a few of these in the Gospels. Perhaps Jesus' ministry to the sick exposed demonic activity as never before, or perhaps Satan focused on extraordinary amount of his strength and power over the land of Israel while Jesus walked and healed there. 
When Jesus left this earth, he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell his people. The life of Christ within us, as believers, is our defence against the forces of evil. We may suffer from physical, emotional or mental illnesses that seem like demons within us. And God often uses the power of medical treatment to heal us of those illnesses. But let's not discount the power we possess within ourselves as children of God. That power forms a hedge of protection around and within us as we maintain a close relationship with God the Father, Christ his Son and the Holy Spirit, our strength and comfort. We will now listen to Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28. The Faith of a Gentile Woman Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, Your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now reflect on the following questions. Number one, why do you suppose Jesus ignored this woman at first? Number two, why do you think she didn't give up despite apparent rejection? Number three, why did Jesus make an exception to his policy of focusing his ministry on Jews? Thank you for listening. Let us not ever take for granted the enemy and his ways. Demon possession still exists, still occurs. The enemy works on all kinds of levels within us and attacks different aspects of our lives, our family members, our children, our relationships, our marriages. He attacks anything to confuse, distract or turn you away from Christ. We need to stay strong, continue praying and covering ourselves each day. God has defeated all, has the victory. And the enemy knows that, but always tries to distract still. So continue to hold yourself up in prayer. Cover yourself with the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus. Continue praying, continue seeking God for protection Continue asking God to lead and direct you and build on your relationship with Jesus. And the enemy will flee. He has to because Jesus has defeated him. Join me tomorrow as we take a look at her promises. Stay safe, keep praying and God bless. This is part three of four where we take a look at her promise. What possible promise can be found in a pagan woman whose little girl was possessed by an evil spirit? The Syrophoenician woman wouldn't have known what to do about her daughter had she not heard about Jesus. Somehow she was given the faith to believe that he was capable of saving her child. Evil spirits, unfortunately, are not creatures of a former age. We too must fight the evil powers in our own lives. The difference now is that Jesus has won the ultimate victory on the cross. As believers, we share in his victory. He has given us authority over the evil forces that threaten us. We may still be fighting the battle, but strange as it might sound, the victory is already won. Some Promises in Scripture Ephesians 6 verse 10 Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 1 John 4 verses 2 to 3 
Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. 1 John 4 verse 4 The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. We will now reflect on the following two questions. Number one, do you tend to give up easily or persist? What does your current situation call for? Number two, when a needy person approaches you, how do you typically respond? What if the person is emotionally needy, continually striking close to you, interrupting your conversations with others, asking questions you can't answer, and genuinely wanting more than you wish to give. Thank you for listening. The battle has already been won. So many promises in scripture because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. We are able to fight the battle of the enemy. Because we have, because Jesus has already won. We have that same authority within us. And it's just for us to tune in and activate that authority that we have. Exercise it. That faith we have in Jesus. Now, this Syrophoenician woman had to have heard about Jesus from somewhere. She had to have heard the stories. She had to have heard the testimonies of the work that Jesus did. And she believed it. She thoroughly believed it. We hear stories all the time. Share your story. Share your story about how God has worked in your life. And in the same way, we can encourage others to have that faith in Jesus Christ. Join me tomorrow as we take a look at her legacy of prayer. Stay safe, keep praying, and God bless. Woman. This is part four of four, where we take a look at her legacy of prayer. Matthew 15, verse 28. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. We can reflect on Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. We can praise God for his power to deliver us from every form of evil. We can offer thanks for the deliverance you have already experienced. We can confess any hopelessness about your children or others you love. We can ask God to give you the same terrier-like faith that the Syrophoenician woman had, so that you will never give up praying for the salvation of your loved ones. How we can lift our hearts. Though most of our children will never suffer from actual demonic possession, all of them are engaged, as we are, in a spiritual battle. As a parent, your prayers and your life play a role in the spiritual protection of your children. This week, pray Psalm 46 or Psalm 91 for the spiritual protection of your family, or take a few moments to pray these verses from Psalm 125 verses 1 to 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Imagine that every member of your family is surrounded by God, just as mountains surround the city of Jerusalem. Offer each one to him, placing them in his care. When you are worried about a particular family member, pray a quick prayer, asking God to surround him or her with his protection. Let us pray. Lord, surround my children like the mountains surrounding Jerusalem. Encircle our family with your power and peace. Deliver us from evil now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me this week as we reflected on the Syrophoenician woman. This is a woman that wouldn't have thought anything of a Jew. She was a Gentile. And Jesus 
did not want to exercise his call on the Gentiles too early before God had asked him to and therefore was a bit reluctant when the woman approached him. However, the strength of her faith impressed Jesus and he in turn healed her daughter. May we take encouragement by the Syrophoenician woman to know that that tenacious faith that we have, the strength of our faith that we have, we can approach God with anything. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, winning the victory against the enemy, who is consistently at work trying to distract us and pull us away from Jesus, because she has that strength of faith and Jesus had won the victory on that cross. She knew that Jesus would be able to heal her daughter. May we be encouraged by her. May we draw and activate our faith to call on God in these times especially, lifting up ourselves, our family, our loved ones, to God in prayer. Lift them up to God in prayer and he will surround your whole family. If ever there was a time to intercede, which is literally just praying to God and asking God on behalf of somebody else to come in, to protect them, to guide them, to love them, to bless them. So this week, have a think about yourselves, your family members, who you would like to raise up in prayer. Raise up in prayer and ask God to protect, to heal, to bless, to guide. Keep praying. Keep praying. This is a Lent season. Keep praying and seeking God to build on your relationship, to strengthen your faith, to be strong and tenacious in your faith. Because it is a battle. It is a battle that we are fighting, a spiritual battle. And we need to exercise our spiritual muscles. So have a great weekend. Keep focusing on the Lord. Lift up yourselves and your loved ones in prayer. Stay safe, keep praying, and God bless.